What's up guys? It's your girl here, Rossi. Hello, movie lovers. And tonight we are going to discuss the new Hellraiser on Hulu. So let's get it started. What's up, movie lovers? It's your girl, Rossi. And I finally got to see the new Hellraiser on Hulu. I watched it uh, late last night, about midnight. Just a second, let me get myself situated. I watched it about midnight last night. Um, I really enjoyed it, guys. Um, this is a new story. It's um, not, you know, a part two or a remake or a prequel. This is a whole new story in the world of Hellraiser. So let's get started with a few things I want to talk about. First of all, um, Hellraiser was originally, um, well, it's directed by David Bruckner, um, and this is a, um, what, Clive Barker um, story. And um, there are books that were written, they were called um, Hellbound, The Hellbound Heart. And it also was a play, fun fact, that premiered in 1986. The original guy that played Hellraiser, um, uh, Doug Bradley, he also played Pinhead in the uh, play adaptation of Hellraiser, which was called The Hellbound Heart. Now, in this Hellraiser, we have um, a new protagonist playing Pinhead, or the High Priestess. And uh, let me find out what her name is. She did a great job, by the way, guys. Um, it is starring, just a second, let me get my stuff together here. So the movie is um, starring um, Odessa Azion. She plays Raleigh, which is our um, one of our main characters. And um, let's see, Jamie Clayton is playing Pinhead or High Priestess, and she did a great job. So the story starts with our, um, our lead, um, Riley, and uh, she has, uh, she's a drug addict. She has this boyfriend who's also an addict, not a great guy. And uh, she's living with her brother, Matt, his husband, and another roommate. Well, um, I'm going to skip a little bit, uh, skip around like I did last week with the Blonde Review. Um, so we're going to go out all out of order. Um, anyways, um, so Riley is an addict, and um, she has this boyfriend, Trevor, who um, they are deeply in love with each other. Um, when we get to see Riley and uh, Trevor, you know, uh, as all the Hellraisers do, there's a, a sex scene, you know, between Riley and uh, Trevor, and um, they're going at it. Anyways, um, she lives with her brother, Matt, and uh, his boyfriend and their roommate. And uh, needless to say, uh, Trevor and Riley are getting it on, and it's pretty freaking loud, and they don't realize that there's other people in the house. Quite funny. She comes out of the room, you get introduced to the other characters in the movie. Um, as the plot goes along, anyways, uh, Raleigh, you know, she's, she's really trying to beat drugs. I think she's a pill popper and she was off for about a week. Her brother's not forward. Uh, he and, he and his sister are very close, uh, being that she lives with him, younger sister, and, uh, he takes care of her, but he's not too happy with, um, the life that Raleigh has chosen and being with Trevor, who's also an addict and just not a good guy, as you'll figure out later on in the film. Um, what I really liked about this film was the fact that in this Hellraiser, they really, um, uh, paid a, uh, we get to know more about the box or the laminate configuration in which the box is also called. So they, um, give a lot of detail, which we haven't been getting in the, all the past previous Hellraisers. You know about the box, you know what happens, but they really focus on the um, box, okay? Uh, the puzzle cube. Um, anyways, Raleigh gets her hands on the puzzle cube. Uh, her, her, She's tired of being broke, and her boyfriend, Trevor, who's not a great guy, you know, uh, lets her know, hey, I got a, a job we can do. We can make some money, but we got to uh, go and steal this artifact. They don't know what it is. They go out one night. They um, have to break into this safe. They get this safe um, broken into, and inside the safe is our little you know cube you know um our puzzle they don't know what it is trevor doesn't know what it is at least that's what we you know so far that's what we think anyways so they get this box and they're looking at it and 
you know, uh, like with all the other previous ones, um, you know, they're, they're curious about it. Um, anyways, uh, to get through it, Riley ends up um, being the one that opens up the box. Um, one night, uh, she comes home, you know, she told her brother she wouldn't be with Trevor anymore. Of course, you know, you push people away. They tend to, you know, stick together like glue, which happened between Trevor and Riley. Uh, the brothers, like, kind of had it. Uh, they've never gotten into this type of argument before. Um, they've always had each other's back. And the brother's like, I'm just, I, I'm over it. You know, you come in here drunk. You're disrespecting my home. I want you out of my house. So he kicks Riley out, not wanting to, but, you know, kicks her out. And, um... Raleigh leaves the house. Um, she, you know, has a car. She goes to her car to um, sleep in it. And when she's in her car and she's getting her pillow, the box falls out of her backpack. So she picks the box up. She goes to the park. She sits on this merry-go-round. And by the way, she decides to go ahead and take a few pills to, you know, feel a little better. And uh, she takes the pill. She's really high. She goes to this merry-go-round and she's playing with the box. And the box, I think it opens up at that point. But um, the box opens up. She's, she sees that it opens up, but she kind of like blacks out. Once the box opens up, guys, you know, and you're playing with the box, you get to see the Cenobites. And the Cenobites are um, uh, sadomastic, sadist. They're sadists. I don't want to say the full name because I'm probably saying it wrong. But anyways, they're sadists. They're hell demons. They live in hell. And once you open up that box, that's when, you know, you get introduced to the Cenobites. And there's many different uh, Cenobites. There's uh, one that was an old one, and then they have new ones, and they look freaking awesome. Um, the makeup, the all of it, it's just, it looks really good. So I really appreciate it, that. Anyways, uh, Matt wakes up. Um, he sees that, he realizes his sister's not there. He goes up the street to go find her because he has this disturbing nightmare which wakes him up. And uh, he goes, he finds her at the park on the merry-go-round, passed out. He's trying to wake her up. Raleigh, 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 what's, what's up? Um, he tries to wake her up. There's this box there. And the thing about the box, guys, is there is this blade. Once that blade nicks you, cuts you, whatever, you, you're, they, they own you, basically. The Cenobites uh, are high priestess. You, you, they're coming for um, blood, basically. Anyways, it... it it ends up stabbing Matt. Uh, Matt has a cut. Raleigh wakes up. He gets her up. He sits her alongside the the in the park against the wall next to the restrooms. He goes in a bathroom and his cut is like deep, you guys. It's opened up. He's bleeding all over the place. And then he starts to like fade in, fade out. He's kind of woozy. Uh, you see the gash, so you 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 understand that. The blade that comes out of that cube, and if it is not just a nick, like it cuts you deep. I mean, blood's everywhere. And at this point, the bathroom transforms into like the box. It's like the gates of hell opens up, and we see visions, or we see, you know, the high priestess. You get to see, um, I think at that point you see some of the Cenobites, but you do get to see the high priestess. Matt doesn't know what's going on, he's like tripping. Um, he, um, he's in the bathroom. All of a sudden you hear him screaming, screaming. Rowley wakes up, you know, cause she's, she's taking some drugs. So she's in and out coming too. She does hear her brother scream. She sees him, remembers him going into the bathroom, although she's kind of out of it. So she goes in a the bathroom. There is no sign of Matt. He's gone. He, she still sees the blood in the sink. But he's gone, nowhere to be found. And if you love Hellraiser, you know about Hellraiser. Um, you know where he is. He's trapped in, in hell, basically. Um, from that point, um, Raleigh starts to become more um, interested in this box. And one thing that happens, though, right when um, after Matt disappears, the box, once it's opened up, it kind of um, like goes into a different configuration. And she sees it's moving. Um, and one thing you'll notice is when that the blade cuts you, you it, the blood drips on the, the cube and it's, it's feeding the cube. And the cube kind of sucks up the blood because obviously it's, um, it's you know, hell, basically, okay? Um, let's see. There's some other fun facts or things that 
uh, well, let me just read the synopsis, okay? So I'm, I'm going all over the place because I really did. Uh, I love this film. It was really good. I was, I didn't know what to expect. Um, I thought it was going to be like a remake. And so when it starts, I'm kind of looking for, you know, things that happened in the original Hellraiser. I was um, um, pleasantly pleased that this was a whole new installation, a whole new story, okay? from the Hellraiser world. But anyways, the synopsis is this. It depicts a sinister man in a soup luring someone into um, solving the mysterious puzzle box and the Cenobite soon arrive in ghoulish fashion to inflict horrific torture on their new set of victims, okay? So that's what this story is about. Kind of like other ones, but this one's really good because we really get to see um, the transformation of a human becoming um, a Cenobite, all right? and we saw that and i think it was hellraiser 2 they told a story about um elliot spencer who was uh who ended up being um pinhead how he opened up the box and he wanted you know the pleasures that they offer you and uh let's just say um the pleasure that they offer you that you think you're getting pleasure and power um no it's it's they have a whole nother meaning the cenobites have a whole nother um idea of what pleasure is okay so this box is pretty much pleasure and pain, okay? Um, and uh, Roland um, Voigt, who, um, he's a, a millionaire in the film. You see him in the beginning, you get to see his mansion. Um, he opened up the box and he has this woman working with him, Serena, an older woman. And in the very beginning, before we even got to Riley and uh, Trevor, the family, um, they show, you know, there there is this um, uh, like party at this mansion. Uh, there's a really uh, attractive young man, Serena, the older woman in the film. You know, she's um, hitting on him, flirting with him, uh, tells him, you know, in five minutes or whatever, meet me, you know, in the bathroom or whatever. He follows, she gets up and leaves. He follows her. And that's our first victim. This young guy is our first victim um, in which she did this for... Um, uh, Roland uh, Voigt, who is the older rich gentleman who originally opened up the box, okay? And we, at this point, we don't know what connection that Roland has with the 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 Riley, Trevor, and um, Matt and his family. Um, anyway, so in the very beginning, they show you that's the first kill. And, of course, you have the chains that um, attach to your flesh um, your shoulders, your, your, your sides. I mean, just horrific, absolutely horrific. And it's, it's bloody and it's Hellraiser and it's, it's, it's an awesome kill. Anyways, um, so that's in the very beginning, okay? So, and you'll be able to meet Roland uh, Voigt again in the film. And when you first see Roland, remember he's in a three-piece suit, you know, um, and he, he did have the woman lure this young man, you know, to feed the box, basically, all right? Anyways, back to Riley. She's um, wanting to find out more about this box because she saw the puzzle itself move. Her brother's gone, and she knows, you know, that it, it, it has to be something that, to do with this box, okay? So from there, we start to, um, you know, find out more about the box. Um, Riley plays with the box more, and it changes shapes like it goes through different phases and i'm going to tell you guys about those phases okay and then we'll talk about the cenobites there's um six configurations okay with the box you have lamnant lore uh lauderant uh liminal lazarus and uh leviathan okay and each of them represents uh, a different aspect of the human experience okay pleasure pain all right um Let's see. And after the box cuts someone, the box opens up the gates of hell and the Cenobites claim the flesh of whoever opens it. OK, so that's what happens uh, with the box. And so when it was opened up and, you know, uh, her brother got, you know, stabbed, you know, by that that blade that's in there that just will just come out the more you kind of, you know, um, move the box. And once that blade gets you, I mean, you're it's you're chained up, you're bound, you know, a uh, high priestess is coming for you. So as the story goes along, you know, no one believes um, uh, Riley when she goes back to the house and tells, you know, Matt's husband or boyfriend um, that 
you know, this is the last place I saw Matt, you know, was, was at the, the park in the bathroom. One thing she didn't tell him was the box. And so she begins to tell them about this box. They think that she's still, you know, um, on drugs that she's actively using. So something's not right with her that someone, uh, they think someone kidnapped Matt and that's how he's gone. So, um, as the, you know, they're finding out more about the box. Um, they end up going to the mansion. Okay. And at the mansion, what's really cool about it is Roland Voigt has built this mansion and it's like the cube. Okay. Um, he has made cages so the mansion can close up in different parts of the mansion so that the Cenobites can't get to him. Okay because he's caged off the way that the house is built. It's pretty cool the way it looks. And when you see it, you instantly know that it, it's the box, okay, the cube. Anyways, she goes there. Uh, a, 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 a lot of the story basically takes place uh, at that mansion. They're going there. Um, the box kind of led them there. Um, you get to see all of the, the Cenobites um, at some point when they're at the mansion. A lot of shit's going down. Um, the Cenobites, guys, let's see, I have the name of the Cenobites. We have the Weeper, who is the new Cenobite. Um, the bodies kind of have like a bluish tint, um, tears, it weeps, um, the skin is just, in all the Cenobites, there's always some pulling of the skin, filleted, opened up. So our new Cenobite, uh, oh, has these dark, like, black eyes. It looks like a... A monstrous alien okay but it, it's freaking awesome um the affix the uh, as fix um this is a centibite where she's it's like she can't breathe obviously and the skin is pulled over her face so all you hear is this struggling to breathe that's a scary one. Oh, my favorite one is the mask uh this centibite face is stretched out i mean it's just stretched out in this like wires you know that's that's on top of the face or underneath the face it's really freaking uh, creepy and then they mentioned one um the mother and this one um it's seen in roland's um art gallery in his house there's like a picture of her and um she's called the mother um because she has this built belly uh she looks pregnant and um, it don't look like it went too well, okay? A lot of these facts, guys, I got from the Den of Geek. Um, it's an article that was written by Joe George. Um, I read a lot of that article today to find out a little bit about, um, to read a little bit about fun facts about um, Hellraiser. So those are your uh, Cenobites. Anyways, you end up finding out as they're in the house and they, uh, you have one of the roommates um, the female roommate of Matt um, Riley and Matt's husband. Um, she is our first kill, you know, with the group of guys, uh, our, our main group, okay? And uh, the way that she's taken, it's really cool because they're in the house, there's these uh, buttons behind the bar and uh, you hit a certain button and like this, this piano playing, organ playing, um, goes off and she's like, oh, sorry guys, didn't mean to hit that one. Then she hits another one and like the wall opens up. So she goes into the wall, the wall closes up and she's stuck there. So she's stuck in a wall. Dude, all of a sudden she um, looks behind her and she sees like a shadowy figure. I think it's a high priestess. Anyways, um, oh, oh, by the way, guys, um, side note, also uh, Jitter Teeth, the, 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 the chatter each teeth guy, he's back too, okay? Um, anyways, um, so she's in the wall and this kill that she gets, dude, like they freaking the, the pinhead sees her. She's freaking out. She's trying to run from them and it literally takes her, takes the, the pinhead, high priestess, takes the pin, sticks it in her neck. Okay. After she's already being tortured. And what's really cool about this scene is as the pin is going in her neck, they have a view of the inside of her neck and her yelling and you hear that it it's an awesome freaking kill and they stick the pin through it goes through one side pulls it out i mean torture you hear her screaming she's gone she's in the underworld the hell gone that's our first one all right um as they're trying to escape because um 
you know, a lot of shit's going on. I'm probably missing some of some stuff, but I'm trying to get through this. Um, there's just so much. Anyways, as she, um, as they're, you know, um, going along, they realize um, that the house has levers as well. And they can hit a lever and the cage, you know, uh, closes up by the door so that the Cenobites can't get into the house. And so um, you have Trevor at this point who's been bitten by the chattery tooth when a chunk is taken out of him. Um, he's still living though. Rowley's working hard to help them. By the way, she does have a discussion with Pinhead before Trevor gets uh, bitten and the high priestess. And the high priestess is letting her know, I need two more bodies. I need two more. Um, or I take you. So if, if you're able to solve the puzzle, you have leverage. If you're not and you don't give them what they want they're getting you no matter where you go they know where you're at so they're getting you anyway she has this conversation with um the priestess um and the priestess lets her know so she ends up turning the tables on the cenobites and there's a point where she realizes that she needs to lure one in for that to be a kill because she doesn't want to kill her boyfriend she doesn't want to kill you know uh, matt's you know um husband and she we already lost one you know what i'm saying so she turns the tables they do this trap where they open up the the gates uh, goes outside and then all the cenobites just appear you have the high priestess in front you got all the others um that are on the side and you guys like when they appear like the first one the first hellraiser those cenobites were awesome but this one it's just there's another level of creep with the graphics we have today the the makeup we're able to do it's just it's just freaking awesome and when you're able to see every single one of them at one time it's just so freaking cool dude and they're focused on getting you so they end up luring um at the asphics into the house and um uh they and oh no no dude they freaking uh uh, stabbed uh, the the chattery one. He ends up getting uh, stabbed, poked with the 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 cube, and so there is one kill. So they decide, okay, and and what's what's effed up about this is, even though the Cenobites are one with you know our high priestess and they work together, it doesn't matter if that blade on that box cuts you. I don't care who you are you are done you are them and and knowing that the chatter you know uh cenobite has already been taken because you see where where he's at um you finally see just the chains that come and bound you and just rips the freaking um the chatter you know cenobite just dude rips it apart done so we got our first kill okay um and so Riley's kind of like, you know, okay, this worked. Let's let's set this up and do this again. So that's when they, you know, figured out the buttons in a house and how to work the house because, like I said, the house is pretty much like the box. The Roland Voigt built it like that to protect himself from the Cenobites, and it worked. Okay, so she opens up the gates. They lit, you know, the Asphyx comes in. The Asphyx is coming in to claim them, but things go awry. Um, they're not able to get the blade in it, and that's when they're running, you know, and all the, the cages starts to close up to where they're separate in one place, separate in another place, and this is when you get to see um, freaking um, uh, Roland Voigt, and when you see him again, he's he, he appears because, remember, Trevor is effed up, like, he has a chunk taken out of him, he's bleeding, Come to find out, Trevor is our bad guy. He and Roland worked together because um, Roland paid him to go and get someone to open up that box so that he can give to the Cenobites, okay? Um, because Roland made a deal, you know, pleasure. But pleasure wasn't exactly what he thought he thought it was or we think it was. And dude, when you see Roland, oh my gosh, it's like he has this organ in in him like a part of the box in him and it's it's constantly it's turning and it's actually his um his nerves 
um, latched in this organ thing, a uh, metal thing that's a part of his freaking chest, and it tightens up. So he's going through this torture because he is going to be the new Cenobite. So kind of like in the first, or I think it was the second one, where you get to see Elliot Spencer, the original Pinhead, how he was a World War I um, soldier and how he opened up the box and how he becomes Pinhead from human. We actually get to see that um, in this version of Hellraiser. And I really appreciate that because to see a, a Cenobite being made was and the torture that it has to go through in order to get to its final form. So every time this click happens, it, it turns and it pulls at his nerves and he's just in a lot of freaking pain. So anyways, uh, so that's when you first see him, when you realize that he and Trevor are, are working together, Trevor's working for him. So um, Riley um, ends up, or, or Trevor, um, Trevor ends up saying, you know, Riley, I'm really sorry this had to happen so since they didn't get the asphyx that is caught in this um gate you know kind of caught up they end up getting um going after matt's husband and so you have um oh what's her name goodness i think it's uh uh no i think it's the uh, the the other one the mask or one of them that ends up freaking getting to um Matt's uh, husband and getting ready to claim its flesh because you know remember you know um, Riley owes that to them you know and so Riley's talking to the the Cenobite and they end up making a deal because Riley gets the choice to pick whoever she wants to so if the Cenobite chose that person and being that Riley's in control of this box and has opened it up and knows how to work it she ends up letting them take Trevor and Trevor, dude, the way that he goes, they end up uh, letting go of, you know, Matt's husband. He falls to the ground. I'm sorry, I forgot his name, guys. And they get Trevor. And once I found out Trevor was not good, I could not wait for his kill. And dude, they strap him to the floor, to the ground. He has wires that's just bounding him. And they just, the chains come and rip him apart. Take him away. So, um... This was a really good film. There's more to talk about. Um, the way the film um, ends is that um, Riley ends up, the, the the Roland is now talking to the priestess. They get back to that. Remember, the gates in the house are kind of closed off, so they can't get to Roland as he has this organ in him, you know, part of him, because he's turning into a Cenobite. And Riley ends up hitting the little button to you know open up the gate so that the Cenobites that are trying to get to Roland get to him because he's freaking evil and uh he's looking at Riley and he's like don't do that don't do that it opens up and you get to see Roland being tortured to get to his final form and he gets to his final form you guys he freaking um oh my gosh it's 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 awesome how they do it so the organ you know, because Roland's talking to the priestess, like, I don't, this was not what I expected, whatever. And she's like, all right, basically, I'll give you a better gift. I'll do you one better. You see the organ being pulled, the, the, the instrument being pulled out of his body. You see his body, like, the, the flesh tearing a little bit. It's changing up. And you see him, um, dude, the, the, like, being lifted up, just lifted up you know, out of the house into the sky like a freaking angel. And he's bound to this like cross looking thing. And he's bald when you see him, he's powder ball. And you see the transformation happen to him becoming a Cenobite. It was freaking cool, dude. There's his body stripping apart, skin filleting open. His mouth is filleted open, looking like the chatter. Um, the all of this just opens up legs opened up i mean flesh just everywhere they bound him to this like metal cross thing you kind of hear like this angelic singing or something going on dude the way it ended was so freaking cool because it makes me believe like i'm sure it's gonna happen that 
obviously we're going to get another installment i read to find out they're not mentioning it right now but if you watch this film you know that there's another installment coming that uh roland is now our new um cenobite and like i said the last time we watched this tra transformation was in i think hellraiser two or three when uh elliot spencer who is our original pinhead all right so um listen i really love this film um i thought it was great i do want to mention um a couple of things that i did find out um let's see it was other fun facts that i found out and i think it's about the 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 um the play yeah so okay so the play actually was called hunters in the snow it was a play it was directed by um clive barker uh it starred doug bradley who played uh the original pinhead in the film uh this play was in 1986 i believe the first movie came out in 1987 and doug bradley played um i think the the pinheads for the first i think seven films and then they switched and got another pinhead and then we have the high priestess everyone i've heard everyone talk about oh i can't believe like you know uh the pinhead's gonna be a woman i can't believe it well fun fact if you know hellraiser and you know that they were books in the books the original books which was called the hellbound heart uh, that was wrote, it was a novel that was wrote in 1986. That's the first time that you've seen Pinhead appear. Pinhead was originally um, an androgynous looking woman. Um, it was a woman. Um, I believe that she had, um, obviously her skin's filleted, but it, I heard that her legs, like it had tongues that was attached to her legs and they were moving, you know? So that, th this, um, director david bruckner going back to uh have a woman play um uh the pinhead that's how she it originally was a woman so this is nothing new um it, I, and i like that they that um he went ahead and stuck with what the the books had you know uh the pinhead in a book which was a woman and i believe um uh, Jamie Clayton is a trans woman and she did an awesome job um, the the voice obviously I believe it's um it's uh, added in but the slight smile that she does the the stare and just it being a woman it's even more creepy and I love that the other Cenobites um, are uh, different women and they just look it just looks creepy but uh, Jamie uh, uh, let's see, I want to make sure Jamie Clayton did a, a great job as the High Priestess and in the original, um, in the book, uh, uh, Hellbound Heart, you know, she was referred to as the High Priestess and then Pinhead just caught on. And so, you know, Clive Barker went too happy about that, but it, Pinhead stuck and we went with Pinhead, but it's Pinhead or High Priestess, all right? So it's always been a woman, okay? So we went back to the roots in the book of it being a woman. Um, let's see, uh, another thing, um, remember that the Cenobites, remember they don't really, to them, there is no difference between um, pleasure and pain, you know? They don't see a difference. So when you're opening up that box and you're basically giving your soul to this box because you think you're gonna get some type of great pleasure, power, all of this stuff, it comes with a price. Another thing I want to mention at the end of this film also is Riley ended up living. Um, her um, uh, Matt's husband ended up living. Remember, he was tied up and was going to die there for a second. Um, P Pinhead, the high priestess, has a conversation with Riley and is like, "Listen, um, what do you want? You know." the whole time Riley wanted her brother back or yeah her brother Matt back and you see you see Matt um but she realizes he'll never be the same so she's like I don't want anything I want nothing which really displeases the high priestess and therefore we then see what I was talking about uh um 
Roland's transformation. Anyways, guys, I could talk about this all day forever. I think I covered everything I wanted to cover. Um, also, again, guys, um, check out uh, Den of Geek, the article that was written by Joe George. Um, you can go back and read that article, find out a little bit more. And um, I'm Rossi. I will be back next Wednesday. Um, for another review, I'll surprise you. I'll figure out. It's going to be another scary movie because it is October and I want to, you know, start doing more uh, scary films. And there's another one that I want to talk about next week. I think I might do it. It's a movie called Afflicted and it's also on Hulu. I think it was an IFC movie, but it was really good. Maybe I'll review that next week. Anyways, guys, I'm going to let you go. Love you so much. Let's see. What do, what do we have here? We have some comments here. And I, I always just kind of, let's see. What do we have? Oh, hi, Jojo. There we go. Hi, Jojo. That's uh, my sister, Joanne. Happy Halloween to you too, Joanne. She says happy Halloween. That's my little sister. We're going to go live at the end of uh, October, uh, probably the beginning of November, because uh, we're going to do a review together as well. She's a movie buff as well. Anyways, um really appreciate you guys thank you guys for uh joining me um for another review it's my third episode i'm really loving this guys please um follow john de gregorio um with uh, movie lovers unite you can follow a town alex um you can follow charlie whitman those are my guys we're movie lovers unite i'm rossi talks and i will see you guys next week please like, subscribe, and uh, you can reach us at uh, uh, at Movie Lovers Unite at gmail.com or you can reach me at RossyTalks at, at gmail.com. It's been a pleasure. See you next week, guys.